Hello, it's Mary Beth from Stencil Girl Products. I am just back from a girls weekend and I am gonna wax poetic for a moment about the idea of spending time with like-minded people. I feel restored, energized, I'm filled with new ideas and I am ready to roll. It is an amazing thing when you find your tribe and to take the time to get together with them and see them face to face, be it on Zoom, be it in real life, whatever you can manage, it is just amazing. I traveled to this long weekend without any goals in mind really and I, oh I don't know, I just am restored. So let's do some show and tell first. We did junking. Well, you know we would do that, right? And let me show you this first of all. This is a drawer. It's a little drawer. So you can kind of get the idea of the size of it by my hand. And um, I've been looking for drawers. I've seen people that have used these old drawers for storage or they hang them on the wall or whatever. And this one had these that was painted silver on the front. And I thought that was so funky, the silver in combination with the wood. There were three of them. They were inexpensive. So um, I can hang it up. I am trying to figure out how to show this to you. I can hang it vertically or I can lay it flat on the desk and put things in it. These things will move. You know, I have to jimmy them in and out a little bit, but there's places I can move them around if I want. So I got the matching set of three and I'm totally stoked. I can't wait to put them somewhere. This, um, there was this little store, we were in Tennessee and there was this little store there that had just the coolest stuff. And this was one thing that I got. It's a you know white porcelain tray and it came from a dentist's office and I thought it would be great for putting inks in. It's a deep tray. I think it's going to live on my desk for to use with dip inks or for mixing watercolors or whatever. And then, well, I hadn't bought any buttons for a while so these just kind of jumped into my hands. And then when I got back and we were playing, I got a closer look at there's some cool stuff inside. Like, I don't even know what this is, but it's just cool. And this, and these are little buckle parts, but they're just so different. And anyway, this was a deal at $8. I mean, that's a lot of buttons. Nice, nice, nice. Um, I got this needle point with the idea of, you know, putting it into something different like I do, but it's so cute. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to tear it up. We'll see. It's really pretty though, and it was just a few bucks. I got some napkins for our kitchen that I didn't, I left in the kitchen when I drove over to the studio. These are old transparencies from back when, um, what are they called? They're vintage something something films, vintage, uh, projector films, vintage projector films. Well, I loved this one because I love fonts and everything about that and it's ABC but I think it would be so cool to put it backwards. I don't really know what I'm going to do with these. Truth be known, I'm probably going to hoard them because they're so darn cool and they didn't have more but I love them so much. This was a project um, my friend Kristen Williams from previously of the Ephemera Paducah, which used to be her great store. She had seen um, on, I guess on Instagram or Facebook or somewhere, somebody putting marbles and in ink and rolling them around in a tray. So naturally we had to try that and I made some papers and I love the result of this, especially this one where I mixed like a, I think I mixed burnt sienna and I don't know, some other color to get this olive green one, and I love it. So I'm pretty excited about those. This little, um, this little map I found in a store, just in this big old bin of crappy stuff, and it's from Brooklyn, New York. I mean, look at this. It is beautiful. I absolutely love it. It's ripped in places, but it is so exquisite. Two dollars, 
love, love, love. These two envelopes are full of photos and doodads and all sorts of other things. They were from a flea market we went to. Okay, so I found these down on the bottom. I gotta tell you a funny story about when you're ha hanging out and traveling with your tribe, right? I found them down on the bottom under a bunch of other, just literally junk in this flea market booth and it was outdoors. It was at a drive-in movie theater, a drive-in movie. Anyway, so I'm talking to this guy about what he would charge for them. And I mean, look at these things. They're literally dirty. They're disgusting. It's a whole envelope full of stuff. He's going through page by page and he's taking out the parts that he wants to keep. He has no price on it. I'm trying to figure out if it's gonna be worthwhile or not. I don't even know what to expect from pricing. Well, in the meantime, my two, two of my friends, two of my besties, are behind me like vultures, waiting for me to say no so they can jump in. <laughs> I joke, but it was kind of funny. So I did end up landing the deal on these and was pretty excited about it. But here's a, a, uh, here's a secret. So always look at the bottom. I'm short. I'm always looking at the bottom anyway. And there's always weird stuff underneath other things. And um, these are cool. They're very, very cool. Um, I even like the envelopes, right? The envelopes are so taped together and so grody. Watermark, the whole deal. Love this. So I was pretty excited to get those things. So that's about all I bought, um, but I went with two ideas. One was to work in my journal, and another was to work on some slow stitching. This, I didn't have a journal that I was working on at the moment, so I grabbed this um, Arteza journal that I had, and I thought, well, I see what I'm doing in this, and I hadn't done much in it. All I had done was some swatches, and I had, played with some inks, and I had just made one journal spread. So I thought, I'm going to start out with this journal. And I did do um, some work in it that I, I was happy with. And you know, this is what happens when you are with like-minded people or people who are doing things that excite you creatively. So this is the first spread I made, and I kind of like it. I don't know why I popped this bright green out there, but I think it's kind of cool. Layered up lots of different things on this. Here's the second spread I did. A little bit um, less chaotic maybe than the first one, and but I still, I felt, I just don't know. I felt like I was in my element and I was playing in a way that really pleased me. Then this was the next one, and this is actually real writing. I was really writing stuff here. This was a piece of transparency that I took with me, a um, piece of, I don't know, maybe it's Duralar that I had painted and stenciled. And this was that, this was a sample I had made. Remember when I was trying to duplicate those magazines pages using stencils? I had that in there. and. Then this was another page I did. I used Tiffany's stencil here, the yearbook peoples. And I had a lot of fun working in my journal. I did not get to finish the spread, but I was pretty happy. I did one, two, three, four spreads. So then I was like avoiding my slow stitching as though it were a plug. And mainly, I mean, I was with people that are great slow stitchers, right? This is how my slow stitching normally looks. I get a piece of linen and I lay out a bunch of things on it and I kind of set them into place with a little glue stick and then I stitch on top of them. But it just has never felt right to me. I don't know why, but I don't know. I felt like, I don't know. I just feel like it's just too tidy or it's too something and I don't know where to go with it. and. I get all inhibited with the whole slow stitching thing. As wild and woolly as I might be with the paintbrush, when I get to slow stitching, I freeze up. So I had this piece and I wanted to do more on it, but I was frozen and my friend said, cut it up. And so I did. I cut it into four parts. 
and when you move it around and mix it up, it is so cool. And I think I can approach this now. I feel like I could throw this into something and just start stitching on this. It feels such, um, it feels way more accessible to me and it doesn't feel as precious. And I really learned a lesson by cutting this up. It was a little scary at first because it had taken me a while to put it together, but I cut it up and now I'm ready to do slow stitching on these pieces. Now, then I wanted to push it to the next level because I wanted to find my own way to approach slow stitching. So here's another one that I had done. And this one I had just started and I had sewn it together a little bit, but um, we were at Kristen's house and um, she had her sewing machine set up and I thought, you know, maybe this is what I need to give myself the freedom, is just stitch it down in a few places so that it at least hangs together better as one and then I can go forth with my stitching. So that's what I did. I just ran a couple lines of straight stitching across to stabilize it and I'm ready to go forth with that one. So these are all ready to be slow stitched on. And I got a European flight coming up, so <clears throat> plenty of time. But this is the one that pleased me because I laid these out and then I carried them to the machine and I put one, two, three rows of stitches and now it's ready to go. I didn't horse around with trying to do the collage itself as a stitched thing. I just did the machine stitching for that. And so now I really believe this is gonna free me up. It might not sound like a big difference to you, but for me, it was an enormous movement within my brain. And that was where I needed to be. So here I am, you know, with um, coming back from this retreat with a lot of cool things and I feel restored, I feel ready to roll, and all I can say is give it a shot, give it a try, see if, you know, if your people want to get together with you, venture out. If that's not doable, maybe set up a Zoom with some friends or something like that, where you all bring your things together and you're just all working uh, at this same sort of Zoom table kind of, right? I mean... I don't know, I brought more away from this than I ever would have imagined. And I, I feel a special closeness with the women I traveled with and spending the time getting to know them better. It was just marvelous. Find your tribe, make art with them, free your brain, try something new, cut something up. I did also cut up something else. I. <laughs> I um, was working on a tag for our stencil club swap and I made this tag that was just, it was just ugly. That's the only thing I can say about it and I should have gotten it out so I could show you the, um, the parts. I don't know, I'm going to take a quick look and see if I can find them. I don't know what I've done with them. I am so sorry. I have no idea what I've done with the parts. I'll have to show them to you another time. But believe me, when I say it was an ugly tag, it was an ugly tag. So what I did was I just took it and tore it apart. And it was even still a little damp when I tore it apart. So I ripped it apart and then I ripped some layers up. And I've got some fantastic collage pieces now. And that freed me up to go ahead and make another tag that's worthy of the swap and my swap partner. So anyway, just checking in with everybody to say hi. And I appreciate you watching my Almost Live. I'm Mary Beth Shaw from Stencil Girl Products.